1869 ushered in the completion of the Iron Road. Here we witnessed the last spike being driven, creating a passage from sea to shining sea. This momentous event was attended by the press, politicians, dignitaries, and spectators who wanted the courageous efforts of those who constructed the transcontinental railroad. Among those honored were the Irish, Germans, Cornish, uh, cowboys. Whoa, wait a uh, second. What about the Chinese who worked on the railroad? Check this out. Who are these guys? Chinese immigrants made up the majority of the workers for the Central Pacific Railroad Company, which built the western span of the railroad. But why was the railroad such a big deal? Well, it was a real bear to cross the country by horseback or covered wagon. This dangerous trip took six months. Weathered banditry were constant threats along the way. The railroad allowed the safe transport of people and goods across the country in about six days. This changed the nature of commerce and growth in the US, allowing for the rapid development of the West. Cities popped up along the railroad. People all over the country could now enjoy fresh California produce. Meet Phil Choi, a historian with a Chinese-American perspective. Well, I would say that the Chinese rail worker were certainly heroes and have been uh, a major part of the presence and the building of the West. Actually, the Chinese railroad workers were not credited as such in our history until the last 50 years history been recorded by white historians. And therefore, it's from their perspective that the Chinese were eliminated or at least not counted as important factors. When you're writing history or when you're reading about history, you really can't take everything as factual and as the truth. You have to open your mind, you have to ask questions. I think the working in those days, 150 years ago, was really like hell for the Chinese. And it's remarkable that they survived the whole situation. Centuries of war, famine, and economic depression forced many Chinese to seek their fortunes abroad. A labor shortage in California offered the promise of steady employment. Only three quarters of the Chinese men who attempted the long, dangerous journey survived. The Chinese were assigned the most dangerous and difficult tasks during construction, yet were paid less than the others. Unlike other workers, the Chinese were forced to pay for their own housing and meal provisions. The Chinese lived in tents exposed to the elements year round. Each team had a headman who collected and distributed the payroll. He, in turn, would receive orders from a white foreman. An assigned cook within each gang had a variety of ingredients available to him through Chinese import merchants. Rice, noodles, tea, salted pork, dried fish, fruits, vegetables, seaweed, and mushrooms. This balanced diet, along with the drinking of boiled water and tea and daily bathing, is thought to have contributed to the health of the average Chinese worker. It was Charles Crocker, construction supervisor for the Central Pacific Railroad, who first suggested hiring the Chinese in response to the severe labor shortage in California. J.H. Strobidge, his superintendent, initially scoffed at the idea. After the test hiring of 50 workers proved to be successful, thousands of Chinese were eventually engaged to complete the railroad. 1864, Bloomer Cut presented the first major obstacle to the effort. 63 feet deep and 800 feet long, it required 500 kegs of black powder each day.
Cape Horn, an almost sheer rock face, the Chinese tediously cut narrow ledges with black powder. Suspended by ropes 2,000 feet above the American River, holes were manually drilled into the rock face and then stuffed with black powder. After the fuses were lit, the workers had to scramble back up the cliff to avoid the explosion and falling debris. The Sierra Nevada mountains were the greatest challenge the railroad workers would face. Ascending 7,000 feet in only 100 miles, engineering a passable track bed would become a monumental feat. This path necessitated the construction of 15 tunnels through hard granite and their adjacent stone retaining walls. Without the aid of machinery, the Chinese literally moved mountains by hand. During the slow process of tunneling through the high Sierras, the construction effort faced the harshest winter conditions. Snowstorms blanketed the crew camps. Avalanches claimed the lives of many workers, whose remains were often left unrecovered until the spring thaws. Grueling work conditions up in the Sierras led a group of 2,000 Chinese laborers to strike. They were not allowed to quit or seek other employment and were beaten by their overseers. In addition to demanding that these abuses cease, the strikers wanted an increase in pay and a shorter workday. The strike lasted one week as food supplies were cut off and the Chinese were compelled to go back to work. The Sierra Passage would eventually give way to the Humboldt Flats and then on towards Promontory Summit where the joining of the rails occurred. The Chinese would go on to contribute to the development of other railroads. Anti-Chinese sentiment would increase in the following years ushering in the Chinese Exclusion Act and other discriminatory laws designed to bar the Chinese from entry into the United States and deny them citizenship. Well, at the uh, completion of the Transcontinental Railroad, in the celebration and the driving of the Golden Spike, that the Chinese were not visible. After, you know, we had some 10,000 Chinese working on the railroad, and all of a sudden they disappeared. They were invisible. How come? Why? Ask yourself these questions. The legacy of the Transcontinental Railroad will be remembered as one of the great milestones in United States history. Giving voice to the Chinese helps us to see a clearer picture of history. There are many sides to a story. Often what you see depends on where you're standing.